Okay, uh, we're going to learn a little bit, well, a little bit the dinam of the nine days. There's a lot of fixed farm on the, on the three weeks and nine days. But basically, um, the nine days, this year begins Thursday night and Friday, the Rosh of begins the nine days. So we mentioned that in the Gemara it only speaks about the week of Tisha B'Av. The Minig is in many places starting from the beginning of the nine days, which is it's called the nine days because from Rosh Chodesh until Tisha B'Av is nine days. Now the Gemara says that Mishinichnas of Mamad Tim Besimcha. When the month of Av begins, you start lessening the amount of joy. Unless it is joy from learning Torah, joy of mitzvahs, but physical joy we stop because of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. So people should be, uh, let's discuss some of the practical dinim. Um, building pleasurable places, in other words, not that you need to live in, or a mitzvah like a shul, a mikvah, that you're allowed to build during the nine days. But uh, generally speaking, building of, like to give examples, um, a patio, vacation home, should not be done during the nine days. If you started working before the nine days, and you're gonna lose money, you know, if the, uh, the contractor doesn't come to work, so then he's allowed to work during the nine days. Generally speaking, pref uh, just enjoyable things, like if something broke in the house, you're allowed to fix it. But just remodeling the house, unless if you need a place to live, so it's preferred not to do it during the nine days. Same thing, you don't plant uh, plants, uh, gardens during the nine days. Um, flowers are not planted during the nine days. Okay, now, there's also a custom, which is brought down as a minic, that you don't eat meat and you don't drink wine during the nine days, which begins from Thursday night, this year, Thursday night at sundown. So one shkia comes, let's say, 8 o'clock, um, if it's Thursday night, you're not allowed to drink wine, you're not allowed to eat meat. Now, the reason for that is because yayin is mesameach, meat is mesameach, and also in the time of the base of Migdash, they didn't bring the korbanis in these days. So they banned meat and wine, so therefore the custom is that you don't drink wine or eat meat during the nine days. The only exception to that is Shabbos. Shabbos, you're allowed to eat meat, drink wine, you can have whatever you want in Shabbos, as long as it's kosher. Shabbos, these laws of the nine days don't, don't apply. Grape juice and mashke are fine. Grape juice, no. Grape juice is wine. Grape juice is wine. Beer, you're allowed to. Mashke, you're allowed to. But grape juice is, you make a very pure coffin. Grape juice well, is wine. Concentrate. Doesn't matter. If the brachas are goffin, then it's wine. And grape juice con is considered wine. What? No, there's no leniency because of Rosh Chodesh, in other words. Rosh Chodesh begins the nine days, so therefore the dinam of the nine days. By the way, it's interesting, somebody that brings Shabbos in early, this, uh, this Friday, let's say, somebody brings Shabbos in early, so they go home to eat the Shabbos meal, it's still light outside. They can still have meat and wine, because for them it's Shabbos. I, the, the other people didn't accept, but for you it's Shabbos already. Once it's Shabbos, then it's Shabbos, so then you, you're allowed to have as much meat. Uh, huh? Okay, the nine days is not a good luck time. It's not mazel dicker time. If it's a not mazel dicker time, you try to avoid uh, things, you know, it's just, you avoid things that you need mazel for, because it's not a mazel dicker time, that's all. Now, part of the meat thing is eating chicken, meat, even if you have a food that was cooked with meat, even if there's no meat in it, let's say you made chicken soup, you took out all the chicken. The chicken soup is still chicken. In the meat, with the, if you had the vegetables with meat, even if you take out the meat, it's still flacious. But you're allowed to make part of the food even in a meat pot that was used that day. Obviously, if it's clean, you're allowed to use it and you're allowed to eat it, that's not called uh, eating meat. Uh, and now, what happens if somebody is ill? See, they have a very strict diet, they can't eat dairy, they can't eat fish, they got what? So then, allochically, they're allowed to, preferably chicken, if they can get around, uh, get away with the chicken, then they should do chicken instead of meat. Now, many people have a minute, if it's a Sudas mitzvah, 
it's a Sudas mitzvah, halachically you're allowed to drink wine and eat, have meat. So let's say somebody has a bris milah, halachically you can drink wine, eat meat. Uh, the custom is, you know, it's in halacha, it's really questionable, but this is the way the minig is in halacha, it says this is the minig, that if you listen to somebody finishing a tractate, a siyum and a mesechta, so then halachically you're allowed to have meat and milk, a uh, meat, meat and wine, sorry. The Rebbe Rashab made siyumim, but he, in our minig is, in the camps they do it, with little kids they do it. But our custom is that uh, we don't, even though we make siyum, we don't eat meat or, or drink wine. Even according to those opinions, that uh, siyum helps with eating meat and wine, and they, it lasts for the whole day, or just the night? No, no, just that meal that you're having yeah. at, the, yeah. Just the suda smitzvah. Yeah, in fact, even Allah it says it's only those people that you would have called anyway, not some extra people, and according to many poskim, you have to, you, you can't leave a mesechta for the nine days. You have to learn it, and you can't rush it, and you happen to finish a mesechta. You know, but uh, I'll give you an example. For somebody to read Pirkei Ovis is not enough of a thing to make a siyaman. It's either an order of Mishnayis, which is a sixth of all Mishnayis, or a mesechta of Gemara, or, you know, things like that. But it can't, uh, okay. Now, um, okay, you can't do that. Now, another thing is like this. You're not allowed to do, let, let's talk about, okay, we'll go in this order of the book. You're not allowed to give things to clean. You're not allowed to do laundry during the nine days. You're not allowed to do laundry during the nine days. The only exception to that is children's clothing because they get dirty very quickly. And you know, so then you're allowed to wash clothing up to the week of Tisha B'Av. Up to the week of Tisha B'Av. Um, if somebody mamish ran out of clothes, they can wash only that that they must have. You can't just make a load in the machine. You're only allowed to wash what you must have. And that's only if, you know, you really didn't do it. You can't even have a non-Jew do laundry for you during the nine days. Second, in addition to that, the then is you're not allowed to wear freshly laundered clothing during the nine days, except Shabbos. Shabbos, it doesn't apply. But that doesn't apply to, let's say, underwear, things like that is not an issue. So you can have socks, underwear, you know, that's not a problem. But um, shirts, pants, you know, things like that, you're not allowed to wear freshly laundered garments during the nine days except Shabbos. So it says in Allah, what do you do? Before the nine days, you put on, let's say, you're gonna need five shirts, let's say. So before the nine days start, you take a shirt and you put it on for half an hour, Change it, another shirt, another shirt. Some people say you can even put on five shirts at the same time. Wear it for half an hour and they're, they're cold worn. In fact, in Allah it says, what happens if you didn't do that? And now you have all freshly laundered clothing. You have to put it on the floor and step on it a little bit that it should get wrinkled, that it shouldn't look like it's freshly laundered. What is it, the number of 30 minutes? Hmm. Huh? Because a half an hour is, is, some people say more, by the way, the accepted opinion is a half an hour. Half an hour is called worn, that it, it's, you can see that it was worn already. That's the cheshman half an hour. Nobody, they write le'erach, half an hour, some people write an hour, some people write more. Okay, so people, bachal, they should prepare any clothes that they need. Now, obviously, if you had suits that you wore already before, then it's not a problem. You can wear them again during the nine days. Uh, but in fact, there's an interesting thing. Changing linen on the beds is forbidden even for Shabbos. So then Shkunarach, changing linen, even for Shabbos, is, allowed, is not allowed because that's already privately in the bedroom. But as far as, you should know, it's very interesting. In, in, the, in the time of the Alter Rebbe, in the time of the Alter Rebbe, the Gro also held like the Alter Rebbe in this, in this thing, but... Shabbos of the nine days, they wouldn't even wear Shabbos clothing. They wore the weekday clothing, because it was the middle of the nine days, even Shabbos. They didn't take showers, they didn't do anything. They, it was like a weekday, as far as dress goes. Now, Trebbe writes clearly that we don't change anything from what we're accustomed to, uh, you know, no, yeah, for Shabbos you do everything the same. In fact, even, for instance, okay, let's mention it then. 
Um, technically, you're not allowed to go swimming during the nine days. Okay? Halacha says you're not allowed to wash your body during the nine days. But today, where people are much, people used to go to the bathhouse once a week. Now we do it every day. So the answer, are you allowed to take a shower during the nine days? The answer to the question is like this. If you feel you're dirty, you need a shower, you can take a quick shower. You can't sit there and uh, enjoy the shower. You have to take a quick shower. Going to the mikveh is allowed. If you go every day, you can go during the nine days. By Chassidim, even if you don't go every day, if you're going during the nine days, you're allowed to go to the mikveh. But people uh, shouldn't be taking showers, definitely not in the mikveh. And if it's a public shower in the mikveh, it should not be done. If somebody feels they need a shower, let them take a shower at home and then come to the mikveh. Like this, you're showing openly the nine days don't exist. And that's a very anti halacha concept to do. Okay, um, you cannot buy new things during the nine days, even everyday clothing. You can't buy clothing during the nine days. You can't make new garments during the nine days. Even that, let's say you, have a, you bought a new garment and you need it to be fixed, like a cuff, a hem, whatever. You know, to do it during the nine days. Um, the only hatter, which is given by the way, and people should be aware of this anyway before, Tisha B'Av, you're not allowed to wear leather shoes. So what happens in the middle of the nine days? Somebody realized they, didn't, they don't have a pair of non-leather shoes. So then the Ramesh has a shoe, you're allowed to buy uh, sneakers, non-leather shoes for Tisha B'av. But that's, you know, if you did. But if somebody knows that they don't have, you know, non-leather shoes, they should buy them before the nine days start. If you have someone that's making something for you, like a garment. They have to stop doing the nine days. They have to stop doing They should days? stop doing nine days. If they're contracted before? If it's a guy, again, yeah, unless you lost some money, things like that, yeah. People should not be having, uh, making garments during the nine days. How about for business? What, for business? No, for business, I'm not, th- this you buy, you could buy yourself, sure. How about Torah cover? Torah cover to buy during the nine days? You should. No, it's being made. Oh, no, that's being made, so it's, that's not an issue. It, it could be it's done already. It could be they're not doing it. That, that's, that's not an issue. No. But if you have a garment that needs fixing, let's say something tore, a button fell off, or whatever, then you're allowed to sew it during the nine days. Um, okay. Swimming is not allowed during the nine days. Um, again, technically, you can't wash your whole body during only your hands, face, and feet. But you again... Go what? You go to swimming pool, but don't swim. No, you can't go into the water. You said no swimming. I didn't finish the din yet. <laughs> I didn't finish the din yet. You're not allowed to go. It says, Lamash, if somebody's really dirty, they take a quick dip in a swimming pool to, to take off the dirt. But you can't sit in a swimming pool you know, for comfort, for pleasure. That, that's not allowed. It has to do with Tainu or Safano? No, Tainu. Only because of Tainu. Tainu. But Chlal is brought down in Tzvarim. You don't do <coughs> dangerous things during the nine days because it's not a Mazel Dika time. And you should know it shouldn't happen this year. But every year during the nine days, terrible accidents happen. It's, people are calling me a lot about going on trips. They said, listen, today it's not like the years ago traveling. <coughs> but you can't do anything wild. You know, a lot of times the guys are river, river rafting and, uh, you know, all that. You don't do that during the nine days. You have to go to the ocean for the mikvah, is not... Yeah, but you have to dump and that's it. You can't sit. If you have a hot mikvah yeah. during the nine days, you have to go in, table and get out. You can't sit there and, ah, mechaya. No, that you're not allowed to. That's worse than taking a shower, by the way. Sitting in a hot mikvah for enjoyment is logically worse than taking a shower. Because now you're getting the getting good. This is enjoyment. Your mom should allow to. In fact, in many places, <clears throat> in many, they make sure the mikvahs are cold during the nine days. They don't heat them. It should be, it should be cold. Okay, um, but again, Erev Shabbos, our custom is that we do <clears throat> a really regular shower like that. Because uh, even Post can write that uh, nowadays you could do it. Uh, okay, repairing garments, shining shoes, polishing shoes, you could, shining shoes, it says you shouldn't. Um, 
One? Cut the oh, cut the nails. <clears throat> cut the nails during the nine days is only allowed to cover Shabbos. Now, what about, okay, this Friday, it's anyway, but let's say you cut nails this Friday, the covered Shabbos is fine. <clears throat> Next Shabbos, because it's Erev Tisha B'Av, it's Machlekes. Some people say you're allowed to cut nails then. Some people say you should. Even those that say you could, is only if you cut them every week. If you cut your nails every week, and that's your event, then you could do it. But if you cut your nails once every two, three weeks. <laughs> normally, Rosh <clears throat> Excuse me. And in Tzavaz Rabbi Rachasid, it says you don't take haircuts and you don't cut nails on the Rishchidish. He says it's Sakana. The Alt Rebbe and Shechonarach only digs on haircuts. And even the Alt Rebbe and Shechonarach and Rosh Shabbos says, even if it's out of Shabbos, Rishchidish, you don't take haircuts. Nail cutting, the Alt Rebbe doesn't say if it's Rishchidish not to. So you can learn it two ways. Either the Alter Rebbe doesn't hold of that detail of it, or the first one, the Alter Rebbe, that already explained there's a difference between nails and hair. Because nails are cut much more often, so it's less of a problem with the if it falls out out of Shabbos. Ideally, if somebody can cut the nails before, it's, it's better. But of course, even according to the Alter Rebbe, if somebody didn't cut the nails and now it's the Rosh out of Shabbos, you can cut your nails, but you can't take care of it. And the, and the third day. So you don't cut Thursday. But in this case, it would be better to cut Thursday than Friday.